welcome back so now we are going to start uh, fundamentals of battery pack before entering in this chapter i would like to recap what professor ashok has already taught you in the first chapter he has talked about a comparison between ic engine vehicle and electric vehicle and what are the difference and what are the similarity in fact most of the things of ic engine vehicle can be adopted what are the changes there are two major changes one of them is that instead of engine we need to move for motor and controllers as a prime mover and instead instead of the gas tank or petrol tank or fuel tank we need to move as a energy storage for uh, like uh, lithium ion cells uh, lithium ion battery pack for uh, providing the energy to the motor and controller there are other auxiliary systems that also need energy, energy and that has to be migrated to uh, electrical uh, based platforms in this chapter 2 he has talked about vehicle dynamics what would be the energy consumption because of the different forces on the vehicle aerodynamics the force due to inclination uh, that's also known as gradient force uh, rolling resistance and then what else basically these are the forces which uh, need uh, which need to be overcome by the motor and then in chapter 3 he has talked about ev subsystems like auxiliary systems uh, like a steering system uh, air conditioning brakes booster pump etc in chapter 4 he has talked about electric vehicle uh, storage where he has talked about uh, different cells cell chemistry how to make a pack basics of electrical design and then finally he has moved to the economics now we are going to start how to make a battery pack what are the fundamentals of the battery pack so i'll give some introduction what are the things needed for a battery pack and then we'll move today on mechanical design what does a battery pack needs you can see right side there is a picture of a car which is under fire how come this happen if there is a short circuit which is most common cause of electrical fire so a careful electrical design must be there inside a battery pack what do we mean by electrical design that how the cells are connected in series and parallel the mechanical members which connects the cells is bus bar it should be designed properly so that it can carry the required connect, cu current the second most important thing which a battery pack needs is thermal design a careful thermal design we have seen during the last chapters that temp temperature impacts cell life significantly for a optimum life of a cell the temperature should be something between 15 to 35 degree centigrade however let's consider india if you go to leh and ladakh the temperature goes to minus 20 degree you go to the part of jaisalmer rajasthan jaisalmer is a place in rajasthan the temperature during the summer goes to 50 to 53 degree centigrade so this is environmental factor at the same time there is a if you go to assam heavy rain so moisture uh, if you go to uh, again leh and ladakh the moisture content is very low because of the low temperature so proper thermal design ensures that your battery pack is always running at optimum temperature to enhance your cell life or pack life 
since battery pack is a very uh, uh, heavy capital cost compared to IC engine vehicle, so we want to get the maximum out of it. So, uh, cycle life as well as calendar life other than the energy. Life of a battery pack is very important. If my cell is able to run for eight years or five years, I should provide sufficient protection for that so that it should run for that. That means my battery pack should not corrode, should not break away, my cell should not move. As well as the material what we select there should be of a quality which can sustain our required life. Durability. A vehicle runs in different terrains. Again, I will take example of Leh and Ladakh. It is a completely hilly area. Even most of the places roads are not built. In Chennai and just outskirts of the Chennai, every second you have to do braking. And what braking results? It, it results in jerk force, jerk, which you cannot immediately measure. So the nature of force is not properly known. Then you just go to highway, you can run to 90 kmph and suddenly you got, suddenly you get a path hole. So the battery pack should sustain all these vibrations, all these running condition that for your entire life, whatever life we decide, 5 years or 7 years or 2 years or 1 year, it should run for that particular uh, life. Now the performance becomes very important. If I do not use proper material, what will have, what will have, will have different type of resistances that will reduce the current output. At the same time, it will waste that energy as a form of heat. Now if we have to remove the heat, again we need energy to run a system which can remove the heat. So a proper material, proper design is required for required performance. Safety, it becomes very important, reason up. <coughs> if current is not controlled properly, what will happen? Cell will keep on getting heated up. A cell has a particular temperature range where it can work safely. I am talk, talking different thing than performance. Sometime we may allow the cell to go beyond even 35 degree, 45 degree, 55 degree because we know we can run. But after 55 or 60 degree, we may not allow the cell to go because it could lead to the fire hazard like something like known as thermal runaway or if there is a short circuit, how quickly we can cut off the energy flow so that the fire should not spread away or if there is a adverse environment outside like it is raining heavily, the water should not go inside because water is a conductor, it can lead to the short circuit. So all those precautions we have to take inside a battery pack or in a battery pack. So next we are moving to battery pack development process. How do we do it? battery pack development? So basically a battery pack I can divide into four subdomains. First one is electrical design. In the electrical design basically we look upon all the contactors, bus bar, cell terminals, wiring harness required for energy flow in and out and also the signals which should go to our controller. Right now I am talking controller, I will define the name later. It should also be able to control the 
फ्लो बेस्ड अपॉन करेंट फ्लो और वोल्टेज बेस्ड अपॉन द रिक्वायरमेंट नाउ नेक्स्ट वन इज थर्मल मैनेजमेंट एज ए डिस्कस द थर्मल मैनेजमेंट इज रिक्वायर्ड फॉर अ लॉन्गर लाइफ ऑफ द बैटरी पैक टू गेट मैक्सिमम आउट ऑफ इट वट वी पेड फॉर because again our temperature requirement is again 15 to 35 maximum this is what a optimum temperature range below 15 there is a problem beyond 35 there is a problem mechanical design mechanical design is required for all safety durability performance to mitigate the external environment my cell should not move constraints all the constraints for that mechanical design is required and finally the battery management system the battery management system is heart of a battery it controls everything from current flow during charge as well as discharge cycle it communicates to the sub systems like motor if they demand this much of current i should allow it communicate with the charger that this much current i require for my charging or this much time i require it communicates with outside world that my range is this much it communicates with the driver this is my range available to me now i can go for next 50 km i can go for next 30 km it controls all the events what is happening inside a battery if my cell temperature is going beyond a certain limit which i have already fixed it will cut up the complete energy flow so that there should not be a further damage if anything is not working to its intended use it will lock those things for service in for future service so next this four things what we have talked what is the importance of those four things electrical designs deal with capacity voltage and current if I ha- if i have to make up 2 kilowatt battery pack so i need to put cell in series and parallel combination or parallel and series combination this also tell us what supposed to be the voltage and if there is a voltage requirement for the motor or auxiliary system drive this tells us what would be the again parallel and series combination of cell so remember in chapter four mp ns theory parallel make eh increase series makes voltage increase high voltage isolation nowadays for higher battery, uh, higher capacity battery pack like 10 kilowatt hour battery pack or 15 kilowatt hour battery pack or 50 kilowatt hour battery pack or 100 kilowatt hour battery pack we go for higher voltage range like 350 750 800 the dc voltage is safe for human till 60 65 maximum you can take up to 100 volt beyond that it's not like ac you touch and it will throw you out at will it will give you chance here that situation does not happen at higher voltage you would always be if you touch it in bare hand you would be in problem so if there is any leakage or any anything because of that my high voltage terminal is touching to the ground or my body part of the vehicle i need to isolate that and that's again comes from the electrical design otherwise the passenger in the vehicle would be in problem it could be a life threatening problem 
short circuit scenarios. If short circuits happen, what should be done? Or how should I design that short circuit should not happen? A short circuit is nothing but a, a touching a positive and negative terminal. And because of that, what happens? The energy gets very energy gets converted into heat, which melts that particular location. And finally, the efficient power delivery. Delivery efficient power de delivery means my resistances or any losses which has should be minimized during the electrical design. Next, thermal design. What does thermal design do? It improves the pack efficiency because you are running within the certain temperature limit. Whatever the heat is getting generated, you are remo removing efficiently. And if you maintain the temperature particularly, your life also increases. For electronics, it is a known fact, every 10 degree increase in temperature would bring the life to half. That means, if 50 degrees centigrade, my let us suppose some resistor life is 1000 hours. At 60 degree, the life would be 500 hours only. And the increases cell pack life by maintaining the optimum range of the temperature for running it. Mechanical design. You can see in the picture, a car is toppled. And it happens frequently, everywhere it happens. If battery pack is also getting broken during that time, what will happen? Now, you do not have any control there. It could be a muddy water, it could be a mud, it could be a waterlogged area. Fumes can come, short circuit can happen, and because of the impact itself, the cell may degenerate and can lead to the fire. So, what we need to take care in mechanical design? Even in extreme conditions, my battery pack integrity should be maintained. And that is what is safe structure for extreme conditions, the cost. We should select a material which can help us in safe structure for extreme condition, but the cost should be minimum. We can assemble and disassemble battery pack for service or for recycling quickly. That is what productive means. And reliability, it should not fail without giving any warning. So, when we are talking about a life or durability or reliability, if I know it will fail only after 5 years, after these many cycles, it should fail only after that. Because we know we can replace at that time or we can repair. A mechanical design should ensure ease of assembly during manufacturing as well as if there is something goes wrong, the service should be much easy because this all involves cost manufacturing involved cost as well as service also invo involved cost. It should look good. Anything looks good have more appealing power to buy. Compact, I should take mechanical design should take minimum volume and provide the maximum energy. If that would be the case, we can come closer to the petrol or ice engine driven vehicle, because we can increase what our per kg as well as what our per liter. If we increase that one, we can come closer to the petrol energy, petrol energy level. It should be lightweight. You would have seen in chapter 2, if we increase the mass, our energy demands increases. Can we make minimum possible addition, because cell is not in our control. 
the other part like bus bar casing cell holders can we use a material which can give all other things as well as it is lightweight now next move to bms design the importance of bms design is maintain cell and pack operational limits operational limits can be over voltage under voltage excess current temperatures it should prevent any safety concerning event like one of the example i can give you if my if motor is demanding a current of let's suppose 100 ampere some cases it can happen even though you have put 60 amperes limit so and if i put 60 ampere you means my pack cannot give more than 60 ampere so any time beyond 60 ampere demand it should cut off it should control the thermal system so that my temperature remains become optimum limit communication it should communicate with all other sub systems inside as well as to the external world it should also log it should be able to log if there is any critical event has happened which is not threatening at that moment but could be like if my pack temperature is continuously coming if i put a limit 50 degree and it is coming continuously 45 plus that means something is going wrong it should keep on logging those events so that during the service i should know what are the things has happened inside the pack and i should be able to take appropriate action for that stages of battery pack design what i was talking about is importance why those four electrical design mechanical design thermal design and the bms design is important now i'll talk how to make a battery pack so what are the stages involved in battery pack the first one is cell configuration to achieve required voltage current and capacity we have to put the cells in series parallel and what we have understood in chapter 4 parallel first series second and that is why mpns so ah will get by putting the cells in parallel first parallel and then required voltage by putting the cells that each parallel group in series the second one is structure what a structure covers you see right side there is three color codes mechanical electrical and thermal it's a basic division so when i am talking about case cover end plates ties rod cell holder base plate this all becomes a part of mechanical design even though this is a structure but it's a part of mechanical design when i talk about bus bar wiring harness fuse and plugs these all are parts but a part of electrical design now for thermal design what are the things we required cooling jacket safety valve thermistors next we move to safety at some places because of some reasons battery pack does not has a movable parts but let's suppose because of the any reason my motor start vibrating because of any reason and that vibration is not in control what should it do it should cut off my battery pack should cut off the current flow or energy flow we discuss a picture where the vehicle is toppled that is case of like crash or shock abuse while manufacturing the battery pack if somehow it fell down or if even if it is packed in the vehicle 
and because of the any reason because of rusting of the nuts and bolts which has fixed it to vehicle fails and battery packs fall down that is a case of shock abuse it should maintain its integrity or my bms should be able to cut off the energy flow at that moment short circuits very high current flow which could lead to the melting of the bus bars can lead to the welding of pre charged circuit so that means my circuit is always open or oh sorry closed that means current is con continuously flowing overcharge and over discharge c rate if my cells are designed for c rate of 1 during discharge and 0.5 c during the charge that should not exceed even if externally it is applied or externally if somebody is demanding or something is demanding that's a part of electrical design now for thermal design thermal runaway thermal runaway is a phenomenon where all the energy of the cell as well as the chemical energy stored in the battery comes as a heat it's a quite high the nature of 1 megajoule and above and it's a very short duration event you cannot control so before it reaches to thermal runaway condition i should be able to save my battery and the thermal management which allows not to reach any condition beyond the limitation of the pack next one is controls which i talked just now if vibration even vibration do we can we have some sensors which after detecting some abnormal behavior in vibration or the shock or in the case of crash can shut down my battery and that comes a part of control again it could be mechanical you can have something some spring loaded system where beyond a certain vibration it disconnects or you can have electrical mechanism some sensors or some actuators after sensing a particular vibration beyond particular vibration limit it will open the path so that no energy flow further goes and it can also take a preventive measures like if there is a energy stored in the cell how to dissipate that energy so my energy content of the battery pack come down during the condition of like crash cell monitoring and bms it's a continuous process which we need to keep on doing so that nothing overshoots nor neither current nor voltage vibrations temperatures the next is applications applications basically two things interfaces with the different sub system drivers displays and the telemetry it also tell uh, let let suppose there is a fleet it should also tell fleet owner this is what your this is where your vehicle is and this is now it has only 70 more kilometer to go if there is any event critical event has happened that it can tell that this time cell temperature has exceeded even I, even if i put some t2 temperature and i have put a caution at t1 temperature it has exceeded my temperature of caution temperature of t1 so pack is still working but one need to worry when it when to do the service so these are the stages of battery pack cell configuration structures safety control and application 